breaking news right now tonight at 5 on WHAS 11 News. It's the investigative report we've been waiting for since April 10th. Metro Police just after 4 today releasing their findings and closing the case on the old National Bank mass shooting, along with it, the writings of shooter Connor Sturgeon. In the report, Sturgeon writes that he planned the attack to prove a point on how easy it is for a mentally ill person to buy a gun. He also leaves behind letters to his parents and a handwritten will. WHAS 11's John Charlton's here now with more on the writings he left behind. Again, we spent the past hour going through the conclusions. John, one of the conclusions the detectives determined was the city planned all of this within just one week, the day, just the days prior to this mass shooting. Well, Doug, that's in uh, the 64 pages of new information LMPD released late this afternoon. We're still going through it all, but clearly based on his writings, Connor Sturgeon was wanting to make a statement with the mass shooting. Included in the report was the last photo found on his phone, a selfie he took just five days before showing him with the Joker face. That photo taken just the day before the, he bought the AR-15 at Old National Bank. In a letter to his parents, Sturgeon wrote that he was so sorry for what he has to do and that he cannot take it anymore. He wrote about how easy it was for him to walk into the gun sh shop, buy the AR-15, three additional magazines, and 120 rounds of ammunition. Sturgeon said he has to do, all he had to do was lie on the paperwork for the gun. He then wrote, this country and its politicians have decided that money is more valuable than lives. Let's see if that changes once the fat cats start feeling the pain. They won't listen to words or peaceful protests, so let's see if they listen to bullets. Meanwhile, two pages from his writing showed in large print and caps, I am sorry, I can't take it anymore. Now, the investigation concluded that Sturgeon planned the mass shooting within a week prior to the shooting. Detectives found that there was no evidence Sturgeon searched how to plan or how to enact a mass shooting. John Charlton, WHS 11, on your side. Okay, John, John, we'll have a lot more coming up tonight at 6 as we continue our coverage. And right now, a group of survivors and victims' families from the old National Bank shooting are planning to sue the gun manufacturer. That's Radical Firearms. Now that the LNPD investigative findings are released, the group can go ahead and file that lawsuit. You can see here a photo of that very purchase receipt here in Louisville released in the documents today. This is dated the 4th of April, just six days before the April 10th shooting. The victim's attorney, Tad Thomas, says the goal of the lawsuit is to make sure, quote, weapons of mass destruction are not in the hands of people that are mentally unable to handle them. And right now, it's a story we've been covering from the very beginning. Today, Dawn Coleman sentenced to decades in prison. She is one of the two people charged in the death of five-year-old Cairo Jordan, found dead in a suitcase in southern Indiana last year. Cairo's death shocked the small community of Washington County after a mushroom hunter found his body stuffed in a Las Vegas-style suitcase right in the middle of the woods. It was April of 2022. It took months for Cairo to be identified, even buried as the boy known but to God. Don Coleman was charged with aiding Cairo's mother, Dijon Anderson, in his murder. Alexis Jones and photojournalist Nelson Reyes were in the courtroom. Don Coleman didn't show any emotion while inside of the courtroom Tuesday, and she decided not to speak. However, the judge didn't hold back before handing down her sentence. Unfortunately, the walls of your jail cell for the next 25 years will be nothing compared to the walls of that suitcase. I hope the image is forever etched in your memory. It was thought that this child was possessed by the devil. But it's you, Don Coleman, that has the devil in your soul. Judge Larry Medlock spoke passionately after learning loved ones didn't show up in support of Cairo Jordan. As a part of Coleman's plea deal, Medlock says she will serve a 30-year sentence. The first 25 years will be spent in the Indiana Department of Corrections. The remaining five were suspended. But Coleman will be on probation. Attorneys say Coleman will also testify against Cairo's mother once she's found. After today's hearing, Sergeant Carrie Holes with Indiana State Police shared where they are in locating Dijon Anderson. It's a very active investigation. Uh, you know, any lead, anything that we can do to, to locate the mother in this case is what we're going to do. Uh, I'm confident that that will happen, that we will find her. Um, again, Innocent until proven guilty, she needs her day in court. We want her to come here and answer for that. 
um, to give her side of the story. But uh, until we find her, you know, we're not going to stop looking. If you see Anderson or know where she is, Hull says to contact your local police department. In Salem, Alexis Jones, WHAS 11 on your side. And today, family and friends honored a boy. Police say died at the hands of his own mother. The funeral for nine-year-old Jaden Howard was held this afternoon at Bates Memorial in Smoketown. His mother, Tiffany Lucas, is charged in his murder along with her other son, six-year-old Maurice Baker. Police were called to Lucas's home on Bentwood Drive in Shepherdsville on November 8th, and that's where they discovered the boys both suffering gunshot wounds. Right now, Lucas is being held on a bond of $2 million. And we have new details released today on a murder in New Albany. According to court documents, a fight started between two family members and led to the death of 64-year-old Erlene Deloney. Police believe 20-year-old Donta Reagan Sanders beat her up right outside their home. Police questioned other people who were at the house when it happened, that house on Conservative Street. One witness told police the fight started because Sanders used derogatory language with Deloney. Another witness said they saw Sanders hit her in the face and then stomp on her head while she was on the ground. Sanders was arrested at his girlfriend's place of employment. That was in Clarksville. Police say that he lied about who he was. He's now been charged with murder and lying to police. And the man shot by Louisville Metro Police in the Wyandotte neighborhood of South Louisville last week has now been federally charged for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The indictment says 38-year-old Jerron Bobbitt was illegally possessing an AR-15 style pistol and ammunition. The indictment says Bobbitt was not allowed to carry a firearm because he had previously been convicted of felony offenses several times. Right now, Bobbitt, who survived the shooting, is still in state custody. His next court appearance is November 27th. Arson investigators are trying to figure out what started a fire at an abandoned church rectory in West Louisville this morning. It happened just before 9 at 26 in West Chestnut at the Church of St. Charles Bar Romeo in the Russell neighborhood. The officials from the fire department say the fire spread from the rectory to the part of the church next door. A neighbor called 911 when they saw the smoke. There were some occupants that self rescued before our crews arrived on scene, so there were some people coming out. There was one civilian that was injured and transported to the hospital. It took about 30 firefighters and less than half an hour to get the fire under control. The rectory is considered a total loss and arsons handling the case. And that brush fire we told you about in Borden, Indiana, it was a big one, is now contained thanks to the rain and according to Clark County Emergency Management, that fire started around State Road 60 and top of the road of the of top of the rock road before spreading up the hillside. Several agencies assisted the Borden Wood Township Fire Department yesterday. Officials say about 10 to 12 acres burned. They're going to be continuing to watch the area with their drone and checking for spot fires. And just not long after they got that under control, the big drink of water that really helped them out. That rain was everything that we thought it would be. It would. Rained all night last night and uh, hopefully also going to wash out those sewers. So it's been such the talk around here as to uh, clear up the air as well, Colleen. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I got some good sleep as well. There's nothing better than to sleep to a lot of rain out there. Thankfully, we got some good rain that was much needed, not only for that fire across the river, but also our drought monitor. We'll have that update later this week to see if the conditions got better. Where that low pressure is right now off of the northeast, they're actually seeing some snow bands in upper sta upstate New York, some widespread rain branching across the mid-Atlantic. But if you're traveling anywhere off farther to the west, things are looking good and dry. So here locally across the radar, most of the rain is done, but we have a lot of clouds out there. This is what we call lingering moisture, where there could be a few sprinkles that kind of fall out of those clouds here throughout the evening. But right now on the radar, we are not picking up any of it. In fact, those rain chances are going to stay very minimal throughout the rest of the evening. Temperatures will actually be hovering in the mid to upper 40s overnight tonight, maybe getting to the low 40s tomorrow morning, but those clouds are going to keep our temperatures pretty Pretty moderate. We are seeing some cloudy skies across town right now. Temperatures are in the upper 40s, 47 at Bowman, 49 here in downtown. A little cooler across the river in Indiana in the low 40s. So tomorrow it will be a bit chilly, but we have decreasing clouds just in time for Thanksgiving. Well, we are going to be nice and sunny on Thanksgiving, a high of 55, very comfortable. But if you have any travel plans, we have Christina San Juan here that's going to break down that travel forecast for you coming up shortly. You don't want to miss it, Doug Shea.
All right, sounds good, Colleen, thank you. A respiratory virus infecting dogs has been reported in several states across the country, now including Indiana. And while we couldn't find a case here in Louisville today, it's only natural to worry about your pets. So Ian Hardwood and photojournalist Jessica Farley talked to a vet today about what to look for and how to keep your dog safe. I would just be cautious, but not panic. Louisville Metro Animal Services, Jefferson Animal Hospital, and several other vets and kennels told us they haven't seen the new unknown virus giving dogs flu-like symptoms. Such as fever, sneezing, coughing, um, sometimes can lead to pneumonia. But luckily at this moment, I don't know of any local cases and we definitely don't have any here at the clinic that I work at. That's Dr. Brenna Roth at Goshen Animal Clinic. She's been there seven years with a career in vet medicine spanning over 20. She shared a few things to look for if you're worried about your pet. A lot of times it'll start with them not wanting to eat, lethargy, respiratory signs. She recommends keeping dogs separated if you're worried about infection over at the Highland Dog. We're completely booked for Thanksgiving and Christmas at this point. But taking their usual precautions means the dogs can separate well. Each furry family gets their own room and they regularly rotate through the backyard. Owner Judy Lawson wants to keep them safe. We do require that every dog has his rabies, his bordetella, and his distemper. Uh, they are required to have those to come board here. Um, we also recommend the the flu shot. We don't necessarily require it, but we do recommend it. Vaccinations can help your dog stay safe as the virus goes around. Dr. Roth says that there was a bit of a shortage on some of those vaccines, but they're back in stock now, so it's a great time to go and get one. The risk is greater for dogs in other states where more are contagious. In Oregon, their Department of Agriculture documented over 200 cases of the illness. It has killed dogs, according to the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Oregon State University, but it's hard to tell how many since there's no way to test for the disease. For now, Dr. Ross recommending a little caution. But ultimately, don't panic. In Louisville, Ian Hardwit, WHAS 11, on your side. Here's another suggestion from the vet. Keep your dog away from other dogs. That could help prevent from contracting the virus. If you are bringing dogs together, you want to make sure they're all vaccinated. Well, today, students at New Albany High School walked out of school to protest for a ceasefire in the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict. Students we talked with today outside New Albany High School say their passion for a ceasefire came from social media, where they say they've learned about the history of the conflict and where they've heard from people giving first-hand accounts of the violence. The students say they hope their protest today inspires others in the future. I hope that students who see us doing this can become inspired to speak about things that they have an issue with. So far, over 12,000 Palestinians have been killed in the conflict, while around 1,200 people have been killed in Israel, and about 240 people have been taken captive by Hamas militants.